Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Moist Style Podcast. Today we have Coach Nate. Uh, I know Coach Nate is a great fit for this conversation because we're going to talk about the difference between uh, softball and baseball swing. And I know he's had a lot of experience working with softball players and baseball players. So I kind of really want to pick his brain on this. Um, I know a lot of coaches, you know, they'll talk about, well, she's got a baseball swing or he's got a, a, a softball swing. Uh, so, so I really want to pick his brain on this and kind of see what his thoughts are. Uh, and if there's really a difference between the softball and the baseball swing. So Nate, I appreciate you for being out today, man. How about we get started with you, introduce yourself, and then we'll, we'll jump in with the questions. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, I'm coach Nate or hitting coach Nate, uh, as you might know me on Instagram based on Facebook, it's coach Nate baseball and fast pitch, same on Twitter. Um, so yeah, I am from Dubuque, Iowa. I, uh, I started here cause my coaching, because my daughter, she's now 15. So she's going through the fast pitch world, going through recruiting all this stuff right now. I work for uh, Eric Munson, who is a MLB uh, coach now. So he coaches for the Pittsburgh pirates, AAA organization. Um, so I get a lot of information from him, which is very different. Like most people don't have that access to the pros. You know, he talks to Andy Haynes all the time. Uh, Justin Stone with the Chicago Cubs, who's the uh, hitting director for the Cubs. Um, we talk to him all the time. You know, we he has all these contacts throughout, which is just awesome because we get such a different insight in little old Dubuque, Iowa, which is 40,000 people. Uh, yet he keeps developing D1 player after D1 player, which is really, really cool for me. Um, and then I, I got, again, got in the fast pitch world because my daughter, I didn't know what the difference between a fast pitch swing and a baseball swing was. That's why I actually, this is literally why I started this page. I My page just started because of my daughter. I had to teach her how to play fast pitch. I had no idea what I was doing at the time. I played college baseball. So so I played for University of Dubuque, played semi-pro for a long, long time, never made it to the pros. Um, I, I had a tryout with Milwaukee Brewers. So I, I went through all that, which was really cool. Um, and then uh, I learned a ton from what I didn't do, why I didn't make it, uh, again, why, why I've been able to learn and process all this recruiting and what my daughter's going through and other players. Um, but then, yeah, I, I'm actually the, the hitting coach for Loris College here locally. Uh, again, we're a small town. There's three colleges in this town, but they're all, uh, two of them are D3, and then the other one is uh, NAIA. Um, so again, a lot of stuff going on in this town for such a small town, but we, we keep developing. We have, what, four D1 players coming out of this town. Um, right now and for next year to Washington, Iowa and uh, DePaul and I forget what the other one is. But yeah, anyway, like a lot of cool things going on in this tiny little area of Dubuque, Iowa in the north um, with negative 33, negative 39 degree weather. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We still able to get it done. So <clears throat> but I, I, I credit that a lot to what Eric Munson has really done in this this town. He's changed right. it. You know, I've been working for him for like eight years now. So I just keep learning from that dude more and more. So it's been no, cool. That's pretty cool. And I know you mentioned Justin Stone. And he's actually the one where, where I first started learning the, the swing because, you know, back when I was playing, I didn't really understand the swing. And and, yep. and I remember he came out with a couple of, uh, you know, uh, online videos. And, and that's where I started kind of learning the swing. So I think it's kind of cool that you mentioned him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, so <clears throat> – when it comes to uh, when it comes to lessons, so let's start off with this. So, what yep. age do you do you recommend um, kids, uh, girls, or boys starting um, with lessons? Yeah, so I kind of take a different approach. I think some people are like, "Oh, I won't start a lesson till twelve, or I won't start lessons till 10, or whatever the age is." Um, I think that's really <clears throat> dependent on the parent. Like your parent, the parent has to know what the kid's ready for. Um, don't shove them into lessons if they are not mentally going to be focused at all. Like you should know your kid. If your kid can't hold concentration for a half an hour, uh, you should not bring them to a lesson. They are not mentally ready um, for a lesson. Uh, most of them are, gosh, I get a lot of eight-year-olds and I think that's too early a lot of times. I don't think they're ready for it. I'd rather have you do a, a, an hour camp um, with, a, with an hour so they can be with a bunch of kids and just have some fun with it. But um, I started my daughter at 10 years old. Uh, no, it was eight. I started at eight, but it was like once every two months. I would get a, a drill set just, and I would work with my kid for those two months and see what I can do. If I get 15 minutes with her, that'd be awesome. You know, like just throwing her ball, learning timing stuff, learning what they're teaching for hitting um, from, right. from a fast pitch world. Cause I actually had her with a fast pitch girl that was playing college ball at the time here locally. Um, Cause I was like, I got to figure out this world for my daughter. And then I, I mean, Eric Munson moved into town and I'm like, okay, this guy's doing some different stuff I've never seen before. And as I started studying myself, actually, what, what took me down the rabbit hole was the hitting vault. Um, when I saw Coach Lyle, I was like, 
all mm. right, I've never seen this stuff. And then I see Eric Munson kind of doing some of the similar stuff. And uh, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, I would, gosh, I had a six, a five-year-old in for a lesson. I was kind of like, well, I, you know, I don't see what the ages are. So the kid right. kind of comes in and I'm like five years old. I told the parents, I'm like, that is really young. But that kid was focused the whole lesson. Mm. Like I just taught... And, and I don't know how you do it, but I really, I tell the parents, I want you in here. I want you watching the whole lesson. I want you to work with him. It's not, doesn't, I teach the parents really how to coach it um, at that age. I'm like, if you can just throw them wiffle balls and do some easy timing drills, just walking through some things and you're timing out my, the swing of my arm with your load, like it's a very, very simple thing. So they can start to learn how to sit in their backside longer, um, load mm -hmm. early, that kind of stuff. Um, that's really where it starts. So judge it on your kid, but majority of the time, start them with really a lesson once in a great while and, and uh -huh. fix a mechanical issue or whatever the approach is at that time for that kid. Cause every, like, you know, every kid's different. Um, I don't get one kid that's the same. <laughs> they're they're right. also different. They want to move different. Um, I don't teach them the same. There's no one way cookie cutter way for this, in my opinion. Um, right. I, I, that's why I watch it. You know, coaches like you and coaches like uh, hitting done right or, you know, Coach Lyle and Eric and all these other coaches around the area because they all have different techniques and how they approach things. And right. I can pull those techniques any which way to any kid. And I think it makes me a better coach instead of just saying, no, it's one way. We have to do it this one way all the time. And it, it can't be that way because that's hard for any kid to learn. That's like telling every kid, we here's a book and learn from it. Um, some kids are visual. Some kids hear better. Some kids read better. Like, well, what's, what's more appropriate for that kid to learn? Right. And, I approach it, so. right. and that and that was going to be my next question, because <clears throat> I'm glad you brought that up uh, when it comes to, um, you know, when you first get somebody for the first time, um, mm -hmm. do you focus on, 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 uh, on mechanics or do you focus on, uh, on uh, the mental side of it or it's more age wise? Like, it, it's, you know, younger ones, you focus more on mechanics or so what's your what do you, what, what do you normally do? Yeah, first, I, I kind of do a baseline assessment. I, I set the ball on the tee and I say swing and I take some video and I I don't know what the kid does. Like, I don't know the kid at all. So um, I really want to see how they move. I want to see what they're doing. Um, I, I get some really raw kids that have never touched a bat before. So they're just trying to get into it. And I get some kids that are like that five-year-old I had. Man, he was moving really well. He he got it really quick. And I was like, yeah. I told the parents, I'm like, you don't really need me. Just keep playing with them and don't let a coach mess him up. Like that's more important to this kid. The kid can swing yeah. it. The kid's got good timing. He's got good rhythm. He's got all this stuff. He already loads early. Like, um, just keep playing with him. Like, play, play, play. If you want to bring to me once a month, that'd be more than enough for that kid. You know, that's kind of my approach. So, um, I set the ball on tee, assess, and then majority of the time, because they're so young, or uh, most of them don't know how to sit back, don't know how to sit in their back hip. Um, right. I almost my basic basic drill that I go to is a drop back drill where you just Hey, feet together at the tee, drop back behind it, sit one 1,000, and then turn behind it and hit and just stay behind that tee. Um, just control right. your body. That kind of stuff is where, really where I start. And then I work that into front toss and uh, teach the kids some things. Show them. I always show them a video of an elite hitter uh, in the pros because I'm like, hey, this is what we're trying to mimic. You know, we're trying to get – eventually, I want you to get this good. You know, I'd love for you to get this good, but you have to know where your path, um, where you're starting, where you need to get to. So I, I like to show them that um, once in a great while while I'm doing lessons too. So, right, um, and, and I, I show them those swings as well. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I and I like what you said about the five year old kid because sometimes you know parents can get a little bit intense about this, and like you said, yeah. you know, sometimes you know if they got it, don't mess with it too much because then it takes the fun out of it, and now yep. it turns into a job. And so because because I see it all the time, and kind of going back to what you were saying. Uh, I'm not trying to, you know, jump subjects here, Very but I, I know you talked you talked about parent being there, um, so they can kind of learn and see what the kid needs to work on. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, because you know you have the kids <laughs> sometimes to sit there and they want to coach them up. And I'm like, all right, are you paying yep. me to coach them up, or so I yep, think exactly. So I think it kind of goes both ways. Um, <clears throat> now, so let's go ahead and jump into baseball versus softball swing. So, okay. <clears throat> is there is there really a difference between now? Uh, baseball and softball swing and when you first get you know a kid for the first time do you teach him a baseball swing or a girl a softball swing or you teach him the same swing all right yeah so yeah that's going to be a debate forever i think and again when i was first started i had no idea what the difference was so um mm -hmm. but as i learned and researched and researched and when you start looking at the differences between mlb 
and D1 or professional fast pitch, there, there is no difference in an elite level swing. Um, the, the movements are same. Um, the patterns are the same. Uh, the mechanics of it are the same. Um, now, now I will say that the difference isn't the swing itself. It's timing and rhythm are different because mm-hmm. you're, you're closer. Um, and then obviously where you're watching, uh, pitch locations, um, uh, the, the angle, like those kind of things are different, right? So the, that's what's different about hitting a fast pitch. That's why when you watch, uh, I don't know if you can remember that, when Jenny Finch pitched against... Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Pujols. Uh, and... Pujols, yeah, right? And she struck yeah. him out. Well, guess he's never seen a pitch come up you know, like from the ground yeah. up unless he's seen a sub a sub hand thrower, right? So that mm-hmm. was very different from like majority of guys that play baseball are going to strike out from a fast pitch pitcher because they've never seen it. But guess what? I take my fast pitch girls and I start throwing overhand to them. They can't touch it either because they're not used to this angle from way up here at six feet, you know? So right. that's the difference. And then obviously the timing from baseball, I, I usually teach, you know, the timing you start your load is the, the, the separation of hands and the leg going down. Like everyone has a little different technique on that. Girls, um, I teach it even earlier. I teach it the, almost on the rock back. When they're starting their movement back, I'm like, you're dancing with that pitcher. You got to move when they move. Um, that's usually at the elite level. You have to start that earlier. You're going to be late. Um, Cause I, I, wait, I see girls wait till here. And I used to teach this. I used to teach, wait till they go forward up here and then come back down. And also, right. you know, as we get, my daughter got older, she was later and later. I was like, that's on me. You know, I started realizing that, that move, that shift into the back hip or the sit into the back hip started even earlier than that um, with majority of girls at the elite level. So um, I, I will say like, it's the same swing. No question in my mind. I, I, I will show everyone the videos. Uh, tell me what the difference is. Um, right. But but yeah, pitch like where things are coming from, timing, rhythm, that kind of stuff is a little different on how how your approach is with that hitter and how they how they approach the game. Right, and it's a good point what you talked about. You know, the difference to the ball coming from here and coming from under underneath. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously you you got to get used to it. Like if you go face Jenna Finch right now, like you're probably not gonna touch her. Because uh, you're so used to seeing the ball coming over the top, and, and yep. that's a pretty good point. Uh, you just gotta gotta get used to. It. But I, I do watch, um, you know, a lot of videos of D1 players, like uh, like elite players, um, mm-hmm. softball, and then I watch big leaguers, and this to me is not much of a difference at all. Uh, they no. get loaded the same way, they, they turn the same way. Um, yep. So so I, I'm I'm glad I'm glad you said that. So um, now, <clears throat> so what do, what do coaches mean by I'm kind of curious what you think about this. Like, what do coaches mean about when they say, "Well, she's got a baseball swing"? What it, what the heck does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, like, it's really hard for me to understand. I think because I, again, I see a lot of people coach fast pitch around here, and right. what I see um, is that they teach a very downward swing. You got to hit the fast pitch because it's coming up, and you got to stay on top of it. And mm-hmm. then I think they think a baseball swing is more that up and through or whatever. I mean, again, I I'm guessing here because I don't teach it any different, but from what mm. my eyes are seeing when they see like that kind of turn from behind and stay through that you and I teach that we, we understand to stay on plane longer and stuff like that. They see that swing as a baseball swing. Um, how you and I teach it is my mind, right. From a fast pitch side of things. Cause I see fast pitch a lot at the lower levels that people just don't understand the swing um, to right. a very like, the Justin Stones of the world that really, really know the mechanics of it, um, like how the body actually works. Like now, it, it's the same. It's it's no different. But the parents that are trying to teach it, I think they see the ball coming up, and they think you have to swing down. And I see a very flat shoulder, super. I mean, I can't even go level anymore. Super level mm-hmm. shoulders, like no, I got you. on on fast pitch, and then they're on the front foot. So um, I, I see that a lot in fast pitch at the lower levels that people don't really understand how the swing mechanics really work of things but and then i get them and i'll try to change it a little bit or i get the extreme opposite and um i don't know there's some people that have like that whip stick that really throw it backwards that way and they'll teach at the fast right. pitch girls and they really drop their barrel and their hands go with it and stuff like that and i gotta correct over correct that a lot so yeah it's one or the other but majority it's, it's that way on top stay on top hand stay super high and i gotta swing down through the ball and um right. hit it on the ground kind of style fast pitch I don't, what do you, I mean, what do you see here in Oklahoma? I mean, we're not that far from each other, but do you see the kind of same thing or what are you seeing? Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, I do have a couple of coaches in, in town that they will, they'll say, no, that's, you know, you have to chop down the ball because the ball's coming up 
And then you do have a couple of the, 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 the softball coaches that will say, you know, you have to stay on playing with the ball is the same thing. But again, just like you're saying, that, that'll never end. <laughs> You know, yep. just you know, people have their own opinions, and and really, I think at the end of the day, it's what works best for the for the hitter. But um, exactly. I just think I, I think they they try to focus too much on one path, like just you know, straight down path. And you know, for for some hitter, I think it does work um, mm -hmm. because they dump the barrel so early, and so sometimes yep. you have to tell them freaking chop down to the ground, uh, mm -hmm. and then they end up on playing with the ball. But not everybody needs that, so that's what yeah, I'm trying exactly. to say. So. I mean, that's a that's like Christian Yelich when you work with Barry Bonds. I mean, he's right, like, there you go. here's a T, like you swing straight down. I want to hit in the ground right in front of the home plate. Like, yeah, right. I'm never going to do that in a game, but you're trying to fix a mechanical flaw, right? And, right. and like you said, a girl that drops a barrel and is, is disconnected really early, I'm going to tell her to swing like that. I do want yep. you to swing down and stay on top because you naturally come through on plane. But now the girl that's dropping the barrel, I'd never tell her that because um, right. she – you know, like, or I mean, that that's already on, super on top and on top spinning over, rolling over. I would never tell her to swing down like that because yeah. she's going to roll over even worse and then she's going to spin off and all these bad things can happen for that kid. But again, like you said, I think that's a great point. It's like, it's based on what the kid is doing. You know, it's that's right. what we as coaches are doing. We're trying to work with that kid to make them more athletic at the plate. Right. All right. Uh, now, <clears throat> when it comes to, because I know this is one of the reasons why they say they have to you know, have a softball swing is the, the rise ball. So rise pitch. So like, what, yeah. what do you, what, what's your take on that? Like what, like the, well, first of all, let me ask you this. So uh, is, is a rise ball supposed to be a strike or a ball? Uh, so that's, that's coachable, right? So <laughs> that's depends on the umpire, right? So I, I tell right. us the coaches all the time when we coach it at the college level, cause we get a lot more elite rise balls that move a lot more. Um, mm -hmm. Majority it's their strikeout pitch. They're not trying to throw it for a strike. They want it top of the zone and out of the zone. So you chase it and your whiff underneath. That's what they're trying to get you to do, right? Um, so we always tell our girls, and again, I don't know, hopefully all of our coaches aren't watching this from my uh, college <laughs> conference, but yeah. um, well, we, we, we teach it. Hey, if that uh, watch what the umpire is doing on a rise ball. If he is calling that rise ball for a strike, we have to beat it before the break. So get up in the box. That is the mm. point. Like even he's, she's given that, we can't hit it up here. And even though he's calling it up here because it looks like for him, it looks like it's coming up. Go up in the front of the plate, you know, beat it out in front before it takes that break up, and and let's hit that pitch and stay on top of it. And uh, that, if it's a ball, if he's been calling it a ball game and she can't hit it for a strike, move back. Right, we move him back in our box because guess what? That pitch is coming up, 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 up. Is what it looks like, or it's right. You know, it's coming from the ground on up. This well, I'm gonna go with my camera up that way, right? So right. guess what? I don't want to hit that. I'm gonna tell my players to lay off it, and the more farther back you are the more of a ball it even looks because now it's at the top of my head instead of even at my shoulders where that umpire might be giving it to her. So we, we adjust to what the umpire is doing. It's how we coach it at the late level. Now when I'm teaching to hit a, a rise ball, um, we, we talk about the spin. So the mm -hmm. spin of that pitch is like a circle. You're going to see the circle come at you. Um, and that's why we like to have live like best teams that I see. Um, like in Iowa, it's Iowa Premier. They have all their pitchers still to their hitters. Um, and they're elite pitchers, so like they all have them throw rise balls at them. So you can see the rise ball and understand what's coming at you, and then how to hit it. But like, yeah, you, I do teach rise ball. You're, 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 you feel like you're on top swing down. It's like a hundred mile, ninety mile per hour fastball in baseball that you and I have seen. That you, you feel like you're swinging down. You're trying to hit the top of that ball to stay on top of it if you're at all underneath it earlier on the game, making that adjustment. So that's really how we do teach it. Um, it's right. IT work. Um, throwing it at them from a low level up, stay on top, stay on top, stay on top if you're going to start swinging at it. Um, but yeah, it's it's more the approach that, you know, that we see on the rise ball. That's what I was going to ask you. So like, do you do you play with a count or or you just kind of you go pitch by pitch? Like, because, you know, if you get into this count, you know, if you get a rise, rise ball, then don't don't swing at it. I'm just I'm just kind of thinking about like, a, a, you know, from the baseball side of it, you know, sometimes you know, you, you, when you're up in the count, you're looking for your fastball as long as you obviously can handle it. And then uh, you try to let, lay off, you know, uh, anything else. But do you, so do you go, you're playing with the count or not on that? Yeah. I mean, we do play with the count with it, but uh, it's majority of the time you see, I mean, I'll say about 90% of the time, if you see rise ball, it's going to be a ball. Almost 90% okay. of the time, umpires call it. So we're like, if it's early in the count, rise ball, lay off of it. Unless she makes right. a huge mistake and leaves it low it's going to drop, it's going to rise right into your barrel. <laughs> like that's the best mm -hmm. the case scenario. If the pitcher is missing her rise ball, it's over the middle of the plate. Those balls are rising into your bat 
And those balls are usually home runs. Um, if you miss with rise ball, um, that's the best thing for a hitter because it's a fast pitch low at your knees and r- r- rises to your belt kind of deal. And then all right. of a sudden you're like home run. So, um, but again, at the we're in college, so it doesn't happen too often at the college level. High school, you'll see it once in a while where girls will miss or it won't move. And now it's mm-hmm. just a nice flat fastball and uh, they don't have the spin for it because you, you do have to have a good spin rate for for a, a good rise ball. So that's, that's another thing. It depends on the fit. I mean, they, you know, just like in baseball, there's all these different scenarios that can come into play um, depending right. on what's, what that pitcher is doing, what the umpire is doing um, and and where their locations are. Like, are they missing? Are they hitting? Yeah, that's, right. that's part of the jo- uh, coach's job to explain what's happening coming game time. Um, but uh, I feel like that's a big miss on coaching. Um, they don't coach their players in that way. They don't really talk to their players like, hey, that umpire is calling a ball game. We are not swinging. Sorry, guys. Right. Like, you see that circle? Lay off of it. You know, don't right. swing at it. Um, so that's that's kind of just good coaching, bad coaching. You know, you get it at all levels. So. No, that's a good point because, I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, you got to pay attention to the game, to pay attention to what's going on. Because, you know, mm-hmm. not, not, a, not every umpire is going to have the same uh, strike zone. So so you have to pay attention to that to be able to, you know, have a shot. So <laughs> – that's a good, that's a good exactly. point. Um, now, what what do you think is the, the toughest pitch to hit uh, that you hear from the girls in softball? I would say right now. So there's a trend always in fast pitch from what I'm seeing. Again, I've only been in this for like eight, nine years right now for fast pitch, but I've learned mm-hmm. a lot over the last eight, nine years, but it seems like it shifts. So like, I feel like uh, seven years ago when I first started this, drop ball was a lot bigger of a thing. So Mm -hmm. people were trying to hit the drop ball, right? So that's where like, everyone's like, all right, you got to get, you got to get your back knee underneath that ball. You got to stay through it, you know, kind of stuff. Um, And then it was more of a turn, blah, blah. blah. And then all of a sudden this, the rise ball really took off lately. I I feel like the rise ball at the peak (coughs) is going to go back soon. No, you're good. Um, And then it's going to come back to uh, a drop ball eventually, because right now I'm just, I, my daughter's played at the national level. I got a lot of girls playing at the national level. Um, that travel all over the nation and they just see rise balls like crazy. Right. Um, so it's not, what's more effective. It's what you see less. So everyone throws a rise ball. It gets easy to start seeing it and hitting it because you're going to all these tournaments. You're seeing it all the time. And then you see a drop ball come at you. You're like, Whoa, what is that? I haven't seen an mm-hmm. effective rise ball. So, um, one of our girls that I, I used to work for hitting, um, she's really turning kind of a pitcher only. She's just got a, a full ride from, um, uh, Illinois state and she's just, a great drop ball pitcher and she plays for that Iowa premier team. That's national 16 U and she has right. just been lights out with it. I think she had a 0.9 ERA traveling nationally, you know, all over the nation to Florida, to Arizona, to Texas, you know, like all over and she had 0.9 ERA and she's not tall. She's not that tall lengthy girl. Like you see that are the dominant pitcher. She's just strong. She works out like a monster. She pitches all the time, but her drop ball, nobody touches. I mean, she strikes Nasty. out everybody with that thing because nobody sees it. Nobody has a really good drop ball that I see um, in most areas, you know, they don't have that kind of movement. So she's really perfected that pitch. And when that's a rare thing, it's really hard to hit because it's hard yeah. to get underneath that pitch when it's a strike. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because, you know, obviously if you don't, if you don't see it often, you're going to have a hard time. It just, you're just like me. Like if I go face a softball pitcher, I just, I probably wouldn't even come close to touch yep. it. <laughs> exactly. But you, you got, and, and baseball is the same way. You know, you, you if you want to be able to hit a curveball, you got to be able to see it over and over and over, machine or something. Yep. It's kind of hard to, to hit it, you know, if you only see it <clears throat> once in a while. So, pretty good point. Yep. Um, now, when you have a a kid that's going back to like lessons or or coaching a team, so <clears throat> when you got a, a a softball player or a baseball player that's struggling at the plate, what do you normally go go for? Like, you go for mechanics, or do you work more on on the mental side of it? If we're in the middle of yeah, the definitely, definitely mental. I mean, I, I, I made the mistake early on in my career when I started coaching this stuff is working too, too much fundamentals. Um, again, I, I, I always admit my faults. Parents, you guys need to do the same. Um, players do the same. Like, it's it's almost ninety nine percent up here. Um, come middle of the season, right? You see right. kids with horrible mechanics all the time hit the crap out of the ball because they're super confident because they've been mm-hmm. hitting right. So it's not the mechanical flaw. Um, it can be timing. Um, which again can be meant that's usually a mental thing when am i supposed to actually start to time out the pitch so low to early kind of stuff be ready to go um, but yeah it's almost always in the head so i always talk to them about confidence how we build confidence um, getting them confident um, the way to talk to themselves in the game um, you know like right before you're at bat 
you know, I can, I can't, you know, I'm going to, I, I, it's not like I need to hit this pitch. You don't say those kind of things to yourself. Cause that's, that's a negative talk. Right. So it's, right. I'm going to get a base hit for the team. You know, I'm, I know I can hit this pitch cause I worked my ass off this year against, you know, like all, all whatever, how long it's been. Right. So, um, you just have to know that you worked harder than that pitcher. And it's not right. a, it's not, like a lot of kids will tell, I, I think I pitched or I worked harder than that pitcher. No, it has to be, I know I did it. I know in my core, in my soul that I worked hard on that pitcher and I'm better than every player out there. That's a big confidence thing. So if you are not truly going and working on your swing and you're in a slump, that's totally on you, right? You're not going to build confidence by not practicing. Confidence comes with work, 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 work. And um, the, my daughter, is, I finally got that in her head this year. She's been working her butt off and also her bat just got on fire because she's been in our facility every day hitting, just seeing mm-hmm. front toss with her friends. Not even with me, right? She does a lesson once a great while with me, but it's just hitting over and over. And all of a sudden she started gaining all this confidence. And then come game time, it, show, it showed up and uh, she hit really well. So I was like, heck, it's just work. It's, it's putting that time in to get confident. And um, it's just easier come game time because you know you you know you can do it at that point. It's a no, not a not a want or I'm thinking it or whatever. You know, uh, how right. do you talk to your players with that? Because I I mean I there's different ways to go about it. I go I've gone different ways, but I I really like to beat into it. It's just it's pure work. It is your work ethic that builds confidence. Yeah, and, and, and I kind of wanted to ask you before before I forget. So like, is there a couple of drills that you do with them because? The reason why I ask is because I know sometimes, you know, you do have the kids that get in there and put in the work. But yep. sometimes I feel like, you know, they just swing, 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 but they don't have a, you know, they don't have a, like, uh, like a purpose behind it. You know what I mean? So, and, mm-hmm. and so they, they worry about how many swings they're taking instead of making them count. So like, yeah. do you happen to like, when it, when it comes to that, because now it's because they turn into mechanical, you know, hitters. So do you have a, a couple of drills that you do with them that, that just to work on the mental side of it? um like the yeah. challenge jam or yeah we do i mean there's a million games out there um as you know they're right. just what's right for that right kid but i would say the best thing i think i do i i i like when a kid's really struggling is after every swing or every at bat i we make a game like as much as possible but i tell them how important breathing is and i say you're going to take a pitch from me see how it goes i want you to actually grade that swing with me let's Tell me what you think was that a b c or d swing for you right mm-hmm. and then they will when you hear that like that could have been a, to you as a coach you're like dang that swing was perfect like you you rope that ball and that kid will say a d and then you really know where they are mentally you're like wow they really don't believe in themselves so we need to talk this through whatever that is and they it might have been a horrible swing and they say a and you're like wow this kid is uh, a little unrealistic of what's actually happening with their swing then I take video and I show them where they're at compared to where the pro, like what, again, depending on age, um, what they're right. doing. But I like to get, you know, I have to be real with them because, hey, it, that swing, you know, like that was a little rough. You fall, you, you barely touched that ball and you said it was an A and uh, we're, we're off mechanically here. But you're, for some reason, why do you think that's an A? You know, so we're talking that way. Um, that's really helpful as a coach for to have the kid to grade their own swing instead of coaches always grading it to see where they're at mentally. But then, right. yeah, then I go back. All right, let's talk. Let's take a step back. I want to take three deep breaths, you know, refocus on a part of your bat and then step in there, go through your process nice and slow and just focus on contact right back up the middle. That's all we're trying to do. I'm not trying to do anything special with it. Base hit up the middle. Let's work on that. And I usually start with front toss. You know, I, I'm not I'm not throwing hard to them. I want them to build some confidence with that. And then I'll start mm-hmm. ramping it up and, and go that approach. But Breathing, slowing the game down, that's such a big part of the mental side of the game. Um, mm-hmm. Parents, you might think that sounds crazy, but again, my boss pro coaches with uh, Andy Haynes with the Pittsburgh Pirates, they have a breathing coach. You know, They have a, a yoga person in there talking about breathing, how they should actually inhale, exhale. So uh, that is a big part of the game is slowing it down because in fast pitch, it gets really quick. The game goes fast. And if you're not right. willing to slow it down, it can beat you up pretty bad mentally, and I see it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Softball is definitely a pretty fast game. Um, mm-hmm. Like, like sometimes I work with. Um, not trying to get off subject here, but sometimes I work <laughs> with infield uh, uh, softball players, and they're like, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, the bases are the right distance, and no, it needs to be closer. I'm like, God, think how much closer are the bases? Like, it's it's so fast. 
Like everything yeah, is so close, and so I can only imagine facing facing pitchers. But I, I like that game that that that, that you were saying. I, I, I like that because you know, kind of kind of opens their eyes and kind of see where where they at. Um, because because a lot of like you say, like a lot of hitters are pretty down on themselves, and and so like they don't give themselves credit, so they just keep mm -hmm. shutting down. And so I, I really like that. Um, I have different ways of doing it, but um, but I may I may steal that from you. <laughs> Uh, so. I, I got it from another coach here locally too. So I mean, it, I think I think almost all instructions borrowed what you learn from other coaches. I mean, we all right. we're all growing and all learning. So like, I, I love when coaches use my stuff. I, I'm I've used your stuff off your page before. So it's like it's all yeah. shared information. You know, I don't want it to be a secret. Right, right. Yeah, I, I mean, it's out there. So might as well just just use it for yep uh, for the kids. So um, now, so what do you think is the difference between kind of somewhat going back to what we just talked about what is the difference between successful hitters and and average hitters so like what what do you, what have you noticed that's different about the successful hitters yeah the the successful hitters um again it just goes back to pure work so my most successful hitter that i've ever worked with is her name's mariah myers out of fort dodge iowa and you're gonna see her come up in the college rankings here because she is only a sophomore in high school yet she's hit mm -hmm. like 90 i think she's at like 94 home runs right now um, she hit 40 home runs, I think, this fall. Like, ridiculous yeah, player. So, great, great kid. Um, but guess what she does more than anyone that I know? She works. She puts, right, she, she puts swings. Yeah, she she is in the facility, not our facility, in a different facility. But um, she puts in work five days a week minimum, you know. And she it's not just hitting. She's not swinging. She's going through um, movement patterns, like with PVC pipes or whatever she's working on, like her hips or whatever she's doing, you know, like, She's not just swinging. She is focusing on what she needs to work on mm -hmm. in those in in those days. So it's not just I'm just hitting. I, I'm focused. I have a plan of, of attack. Um, I'm and, and when she does start hitting, she's like, all right, I need to go right field more often, or I need to work on my pole side, like a, or whatever I'm trying to do, or I need to hold my line, like whatever her thing is, right? So she's really good and methodical about that. Um, but the great hitters really know how to slow down their load process um, mm -hmm. before they, like when they're loading, they don't go quick, quick, quick in the cage guys. They're not going in there hitting at a hundred percent. They're going in there at like 25%, get in their feel, seeing the barrel hit the ball really slow and methodical. Um, it's really what, I mean, like Tommy Speck, he just made the pros out of high school from Dubuque here last year. He just got drafted with the Rangers. And, you know, he, I love the Chuck it tool too, but he's the first kid I ever saw use that thing. Um, like four years back, he's using that chuck it tool with his lead hand, just nice and slow. He's actually doing some, he doesn't scissor kick in his swing. He's a lefty, but he's still mm -hmm. doing the scissor kick when he's doing it to stay closed, to deaccelerate his hips a little bit. Um, so like have a plan of attack, you know, know what you're doing. Don't just go in there swinging a hundred percent. That doesn't fix anything. That's going to create more issues. Um, you know, like really hitting is about controlling your body and when you can control your body and slow it down it gets easier to hit because you're just slowing the game down. Everything gets easier from there. And then they ramp up once they kind of get that stuff going. And at the end of their sessions, they're usually hitting um, game time kind of swings, you know? So that's what yeah, I, I see. I, 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 I see that a lot when it comes to, and I'm not trying to interrupt you here, but when it comes to loading, um, you know, they loading and, and just kind of just trying to go as fast as they, as they can in the cages. And obviously, you know, part of it could be like, you know, not being mature, mature enough, they're young. Uh, but those yeah. older, older kids, like you're saying, like she just, she literally goes in there and works on what she needs to work on. I just try to just crank it up and look like crazy out there. Because I know a lot of young um, hitters, they struggle with timing because of their load. They yep. go so fast that they can't, like they see a slow pitcher and then they complain, well, this pitcher is slow. Well, guess what? She ain't gonna throw any faster. <laughs> so you better, <laughs> you better, you better learn how to, how to, how to slow down your load. Maybe start loading later. Um, and then with the fast pitchers, the same thing. Like, well, I can't catch up. I'm like, well, crap, you're jumping out of like, you know, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, 300 miles an hour. Or so, yep. so, so that's a pretty good point. That, and that's what I was going to ask you next. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to like hitters having a routine. So do you think they should stick with the same routine every time or should they just go in there and work on what they need to work on? Um, like what, like what they're struggling with. Yeah, I think routine can change. Um, I mean, right. obviously it can't be a different routine every game because I ain't gonna, that ain't gonna help. Um, but <laughs> I think throughout right. the years, right? I mean, I you see it in the pros all the time. Every year, like all of a sudden, a pros like you see Soto out there, like one hand going down, and then all of a sudden, like five games later, 
or 10 games later, whatever it is, he's starting to go, he's actually starting to go up because he was too much on top. So like his on deck routine has changed based on what's happening to his swing, what he's ch- trying to, st- what he's trying to do to that pitcher as well. Right. So um, one thing the p- pros have that Munson's told me is like their routines are like based on, you know, based on pitching, but like, do they have a cage design guy that designs their cage setup to what that pitcher does to like arm angles and to spin rates? <laughs> it's, a different world than the pros so they really get a lot more information than the regular hitter does but yeah i will say uh, my daughter's routine has changed she's really like i've really had to focus with her getting like that knob through when they start you know swinging because she used to be a big you know um, and i'm in a weird angle here let's go this way there we go no, she used to be you. like drop back and then underneath and she was really starting to disconnect as she was turning underneath instead of just staying here you know kind of like swinging the knob through more. So we had to get really aggressive with getting the knob through. And we started using cam wood bats for that instead mm-hmm. of other things. So um, really focused on the knob and the hands instead of everything else. Cause her lower half was working great. So her, her routine changed to this big, like big loopy swing. Cause she was hitting really well for a while with this big loopy, loopy swing when she was younger. But now I'm like, dude, get tall hands come through, stay high and way more level to swing because she has already that naturally long loopy swing. Um, I'm right. like, you got to get it quicker through now and get quicker behind the ball because she's playing 18 UA and pitching is just a lot better. You have to focus on quicker hands now. Mechanically, you're fine. I just need quicker hands. So your barrel right. can get through a little quicker and get those balls that are that are coming through. So her routine's changed, um, but it's really benefited her. So she understands what her mechanical flaws are um, mm-hmm. based on her training. So she adjusts her, her routine based on the mechanical flaw that she's trying to fix come game time. Yeah, and and that's one thing I tell the kids is that um, um, you know you you kind of want to be, be become your own coach in a way. I'm not saying you you avoid what the coaches are saying, but <laughs> you become you become your own coach by trying to feel what the heck good like like what's wrong with your swing because eventually you know you got to get away from asking the coach so much. Like what did I because you get some players that are like that. Like what did yep. I do wrong with this? One? What did I do wrong? Which is good, yeah. but at the same time, you you gotta be able to feel what you're doing, and so that way, when you yep. are working on it, you know what you need to work yeah. on and what Absolutely. what's what's supposed to feel like. Yeah, feel is oh. huge. You know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say yeah. like at your point, like feeling feeling what's wrong and understanding how your body's supposed to work is a big deal, and I don't I don't feel like a lot of coaches talk about that um, because then yeah, then you get I mean my daughter's falling on the trip. I'm like. Cause I've told her, I'm like, Hey, something's off in game. You don't come to me, you go to coach. And then I also turn into her going to coach every single at bat. What's wrong? What's happening? Why didn't I hit that? It's like, well, no, it was a good swing. You know, like right. you just met, you know, the the pitcher beat you and that's fine. So, you know, like that's going to happen. Um, but she got into that routine. I'm like, now just understand what happened. You, you had a good swing, you know, your timing was just off or whatever. Like right. but you go to coach all the time. She's going to get annoyed or he's going to get annoyed of that. And, and that, that's frustrating as a coach to have to coach you every single at bat instead right. of you just understanding what's really happening come game time and where you missed or what happened and you making that adjustment the next step bat. You know, like right. you probably talk about your players all the time. We do with our college girls more than anything is like, did you make an adjustment from first at bat to second at bat to third at bat? You did you get did you progress progress through your at bats or did you swing right. the same every single t- time expecting a different result for some reason? So. Yeah, hoping for miracles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, well, I, I, I'm, I'm almost done here. I'm not trying to keep you up too long, but um, no, we're good. do you, do you have any, any, uh, any recommendations for coaches that, um, you know, sometimes I feel like coaches are stuck in their own ways, and and let's say you, you get a player that comes to you, and you know, you guys have been working on something, and then you go, and and then she or he goes back to their coach, and they're like, "Well, that's completely wrong." So we got to switch your swing up. And so, what do you, what do you, what recommendations? Uh, I can't even talk. Recommendations you have for uh, for those coaches? Yeah, I, I actually tell my players, I'm like, "Hey, if your coach ever wants to talk to me, I am an open book. I'd love mm-hmm. to talk this through with the coach and try to understand what he's." Because a lot of the times, it's not. I don't even like to say the coach is telling you something wrong, right? Like I have no idea what they're saying. This is just feedback. This is a telephone game now. And mm-hmm. the kid might be hearing it completely different what the coach is explaining. And mm-hmm. then my, my language is different, but if I can talk to that coach, I can get on that same, same language as that coach and really explain it to that kid. Cause I will, I mean, coaches will say, stay on top of the ball, stay on top of the ball. Right. And you hear that or, or trust your hands. I, when I was a kid, I didn't know what any of that meant. I had no idea. So, talking mm-hmm. to that coach, hey, what are you telling her um, or to him or whatever? 
And so I can make an adjustment as a hitting coach. I love doing that, but coaches, you should be able to willing to do that with the hitting coach. All these kids go to someone usually now, right? Everyone's mm-hmm. seen somebody or even if it's a parent. So they just being on the same page is such a huge thing. So being open to the coaches as a hitting coach um, is big, but the players I tell them really try to like absorb what the coaches are saying. And if you do not understand, you have to ask that coach, what do you mean? Like, I don't mm-hmm. understand. Like, don't be afraid of those questions or to ask that question when the coach is explaining something, because I was confused as a kid a lot and I didn't say anything, you know, it just, you think, you know, like I, I had no idea, like let's say, leave your hands back here. I thought when I have to let, leave my hands back, it meant like turn and leave my hands way back there. I had no <laughs> idea or, or get your hands inside the ball. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know I was becoming disconnected and leaving my hands from my backside. Right. I didn't know what I was supposed to stay connected. You know, like those things are, are big to, to understand as a player and how to ask the right questions or to, to, to dig in a little deeper so you could really understand or say, Hey, can you explain that in a different way that didn't click? You know, that didn't make sense to me. And that's okay. Um, for players to say, but now, now if you are learning a technique and we are working on staying on top of the ball and that coach is saying, no, get underneath and get on the outside of the ball for some reason, like, all right, we have issues. Like now that's completely opposite of what we've been talking about. And the raw, like, I never would tell a kid to hit the outside half of the baseball to wrap around, you know, like those things. All right. Now you got to get to a point to understand what's right and what's wrong, what works for you. And all right, let's, uh, let's go back and just say, okay, coach, got it. And you do what you know works, you know, like we've been hitting the cage and you're doing these things that you're roping the ball. And that coach is telling the opposite, like saying you have a baseball swing. It's a very demoralizing thing to a, pl- a girl player. Mm-hmm. Like I hear that a lot. And that, that just beats them up going back to our original point that beats them up mentally. Like I have a bad baseball, like I have a bad baseball. That's what they think. It's like, no, you have a great swing. Like they, if, if they, I told one of my players, I'm like, if the coach says that to you again, tell them, thank you. <laughs> right. and, and like, Cause that's right. in my opinion, if they say you got a baseball swing, that means you got a really good fundamental swing. And right. uh, the way I look at it, so say thank you and see what his response is. And if, if, if that, if he gets mad about that, all right, he needs to come to talk to me and talk to the parents because now he's trying to, to mentally mess up your kid. And that's not fair to any kid. So mm-hmm. again, you have to understand what that coach is trying to do um, or, or what the point of that conversation was, if you're saying those kind of things to your players as a coach. So that's, you know, like I've had every single angle from that. So yeah, that, um, that's, yeah. That, <laughs> really that, that's, that's putting it that on uh, when it comes mm-hmm. to, because uh, sometimes the coaches might be saying the same thing, just different, just different ways, you know, saying it. Um, but, but I, I think, and I always tell my kids like the, I, I coach a couple of young teams um, 10 year and 11 years. So, you know, that age, you know, they, they don't, they don't trust talking to, not that I don't trust, they don't feel comfortable talking to the coaches. And I tell them that I want them to feel comfortable talking to me, asking me questions because sometimes, you know, I feel like the kids are afraid to ask questions to the, to the, to the coaches. And, and, and that's probably why the kids get all confused because the, the yeah. coaches are stuck in their own ways and they don't allow the kids to ask questions. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, um, I'm going to wrap it up with this for, four uh, fun questions and I'll let you go. Uh, I know right, I said uh, we'll keep you anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes, but <laughs> we're going past uh, I, that. I love this. I could, I could talk all day. No, and I appreciate your time so far, man. Um, so the first one I got for you. Um, so what's what's your favorite um, uh, parent to, uh, um, I guess, of a player that, that, that you have or, you know, in college or in, in, in lessons? Like, and in, in why is it your favorite your p- uh, parent? I don't know if I asked yeah, that I, right, but I hope you got that. Yeah, question. no, I get it. No, um, so if we, for me, the favorite parent is the one that comes to the lesson and doesn't say a lot, but they ask me a question here or there so they understand um, what right. we're trying to work on. You know, I love the the questions. Um, I always tell them to record if you don't understand, so you can always go back to it with the player. Um, mm-hmm. I, I love when they record the lesson. They're like, some people are offended by that. Um, so I'm like, a record, you know, if it helps you out as a, as a parent to work with them. And then the parents that actually come back to the facility or go home and work on it with the kid. That's my favorite kind of parent. Like it doesn't happen. I don't make that kid better. I really don't. Like I show you a way to get better, right? It's just like going to school, but the players that really get better are the ones that the parents are invested in the kid um, Mm -hmm. in the best way that they go and play play with them. They play catch with them. They, they throw BP to them. They, they just set a ball in a tee for them. Like 
those are the parent, the kids that get the best by far. Like it's hands down, not even close, right? The parents that are actually invested in the correct way um, of their kid, they don't scream at their parent, their kid. They just talk to them. Like I never see a bad relationship there. They just like to talk to their kid and hang out with their kid. And it's, it's a really cool relationship to see that it's built through baseball or fast pitch. It's, it's really cool. But those kids are almost always the ones that go D1 or go high level college or even in college in general. And they make it right to that next level. Um, now, the opposite of that are the, the parents that scream at their kids. They, they, they can't stop talking during a lesson. They, they're, like you said, they coach them during like, why are you paying me? Right. What's the point of this? If you just want to coach them, go coach them. I'm not going to be offended. Um, right. So yeah. So, and then the, the car ride home, I always tell parents, let the kid decide if they want to talk to you on the car ride home after a tournament or after a game. Um, sometimes they need to be quiet. Sometimes they just need to go through their own stuff, let them approach you, um, that kind of stuff. So uh, that's my advice for parents out there. Don't beat your kid up mentally. This is a game. It is fun. Um, have right. that relationship. Say, I'm there for you. I love you no matter what. I love watching you play. But if you go beyond that and you start telling them what you did wrong, A, B, and C, and go through the list of how bad they were the whole tournament, that kid ain't going to want to come play, back next week and play. You know? Right. So. Right. What yeah. about your you, – you, what? <clears throat> sorry, I meant to interrupt there. Nope. Uh, what about your favorite player that you've ever coached? You don't have to say their names, by the way. It just yeah. Uh, and, and why is it your favorite player? Oh man, uh, I, I I have to go with my kids. I mean, I have my daughter, my my I got a six year old right now that's growing up through it. I mean, if you don't enjoy coaching your, I mean, like playing with your kids, like I think that's a bit of a problem too. But I love I love coaching my kids. Like not in game time. I don't want to do it in game. That's like the last thing I want to coach them in. But um, the kids that just want to hit like my little six year old, dude, he just loves playing he, every day. He's like, can we go hit? Can we go hit? Can we go hit? Can we go hit? Um, mm. Though, I mean, and, and if I can build on that, I guess like those kind of players, right? The kids that just want to go hit, that just want to go play and have fun with the game, like that actually go down to the ball field, call friend, and they just go play, you know, on a field without parents, without coaches. Those mm. are my favorite kind of players. Those are the kids that I know truly love the game. They're not playing for mom and dad. They're playing because they love it. It's not because mom told me I had to go do it or dad told me I had to go do it. It's the ones mm -hmm. that just go play. Those are the ones that last in college really well. They, they usually excel, you know, every time because they just know how to go play and right. they're not worried about anything else. What about your least favorite player? Yeah, it's, it's the ones that are uh, mommy and daddy driven, like especially in college. Like it, it's what again they, they'll call mom and dad and complain and complain and complain um, because that's what they're used to doing i guess they're probably raised that way about complaining about what happened um or what coach is doing or what that you know like blah blah, blah. like uh, um it's an easy trap to get into but why is mom and dad so involved still in college like that shouldn't be a thing um you're there to pay for school first and foremost and college should be or softball should be next but the coaches or parents shouldn't really have any say in college i got we do we still deal with it it's kind of amazing um but you can tell when you're coaching a kid even in a game that well my mom and dad say this you know you're like this is college ball your parents didn't even play grade school like why are we uh why are right. we debating this why is your mom still coaching you or dad still coaching you um when we're trying to coach a specific way um for our game time or to be ready or whatever and, you know it's 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 hard to go back and forth like that it's really confusing for the kid too. And then they usually struggle. Um, it, it's, it's just not a good environment, you know? Right. Okay. Now the last one here, out of all the coaches you've, you've ever had when you played, who's your, who's your favorite one? Again, you don't have to say names and, and, and why. Yeah. Uh, my favorite coach of all time, my dad, I mean, he coached me in everything from when I was a little kid all the way through. I mean, that's why I love this game. Um, he took an advance, advance, uh, invested um, interest in myself when I played. And he played mm -hmm. for his whole life. He tried out for the pros. So he knew the game pretty well. Um, so that was really helpful for me to grow. And he just, I guess I learned a lot from him. Like, I, he never, I never remember him after a game asking me, like, what I did wrong or what I did right. He just kind of let me come to him. You know, it was never pushed on me. It was never anything he just made it fun for me he he let me fall in love with the game instead of him pushing his love of the game onto me um so right. you know it was my sport it wasn't his sport and he actually let me i grew up loving basketball more than baseball until i was in high school and then 
I just eventually realized I was a lot better at, at baseball than I was basketball and I wasn't six, six. So that kind of helped <laughs> too. <laughs> but right. yeah, the, uh, I mean, I just, I, I learned from him in, in the ways of the mental side of it, how to fall in love with the sport, how to teach it, um, in the proper way, how to connect with kids. Like he's really good like that, but he coached me in basketball, baseball, everything I did. So he's just kind of always there for me. And he was just a good coach. You know, I just, yeah. he never screamed at us. He'd get on us pretty hard when we needed it, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't degrade us. You know, he always made it fun. We always played right. games, you know, he taught the game the right way. So that was definitely my favorite coach. I'll, I'll give a second one though. It's gotta be Eric Munson. Um, that dude is a chilled out, you know, he played in the pros for 11 years. But when he coaches a team, you just see him sit there and he understands that like coaching comes in practice, not during game time. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a big po mm -hmm. portion I look at. I mean, yeah, you got a coaching game time. Don't get me wrong. Right. Like, don't hear what I'm not saying. But um, the best coaches I see out there don't have to say a lot because they already coached it. Um, their right. players understand them so well, they know how to make the adjustments come game time. Like that's really good coaching. And when you have to, all right, player, you got to move over a little bit. They know those adjustments, and then they they let the play they they let the players play on the weekends on the tournaments, and then they they just coach them on the on the week, so they don't have to do all that work there in the game time. You shouldn't be coaching in game time unless uh, again age difference. I mean, when they're eight, you yeah you got to coach them. I get that. Like right. you really got to explain the game in the situations, but um, you will start if you really digest it or dig into this game, you'll see the best coaches don't coach game time. They really lay off their players. They let them play and have fun you know, want them to make mistakes, push them to make mistakes, push them to dive. Um, don't right. be afraid of failure, that kind of stuff. So, right. Well, awesome, man. I really appreciate you. Uh, I know I went a little bit over than the, the, what I said I was going to take. Um, <laughs> I love it, dude. But um, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, I'm going to leave all this, uh, all his links to so you can follow him on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I'm not sure if you got TikTok, but if you do, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on here, too. Um, no, nope, don't have you, TikTok. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but I'll put the links here so you can follow Nate. Um, I really appreciate you, man, for being on today. And if you guys are watching this on YouTube, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and remember, keep it moist out. Hey guys, moist out baseball here. If you're interested in having me come out to your city for a fielding camp or a hitting camp, or if you're in the Oklahoma area and you're looking for private lessons or group lessons, you can shoot me a text at 251-509-3815. You can also email me at moistout33 at gmail.com. Keep it moist out.